It's Teresa Rodriguez, and we're on location with Daniel Fetzer, this beautiful property up in Hopland, California, called Jericho. Daniel, thanks so much for spending the day with us. Thank you, Teresa. Daniel, tell us about this winery and how you got started. I started Jericho in 1997. It's in a, about a 200 acre estate, vineyard. Everything we do is estate produced. Of the 200 acres, we have about 110 planted in vineyard, wow. uh, primarily all high density spacing. Daniel, the word organic is being thrown around a lot. Can you actually explain to us what that actually means? Yeah, uh, to be certified organic, you basically are not allowed to use any synthetic materials in the vineyard, meaning um, any compost, any um, fertilizers, you know, they have to be approved, approved organic. Also, the property here is certified biodynamic, which takes it a, a step higher. So, I have to be honest, I really don't know what the word biodynamic means, so can you actually explain it to me? Well, I mean, it's, it's a pretty complex, um, you know, definition, but in simple terms, it's, it's farming with as much uh, self-sufficiency as possible. Wow, so you're really going back to a time before industrialized farming. Yeah, you know, organic farming, a lot, a lot of people think it's, it's a new thing. I mean, the term is new, but if you go back 50 years, we were all organic farmers and a handful of biodynamic farmers as well. Yeah, you're right, there was always pests. So what you're saying to me is that there's a way of getting rid of them without pesticides? And that's what we do here. We, we plant cover crops, we, we have geese, we have goats, we have sheep on the property. And you, you try and create as much diversity as, as possible. The goats and the sheep can um, maintain the cover crops in the winter. We also use the, the manure for composting and spread back into the soil. The whole idea on, on organic or biodynamic farming is balance. You, you have to have balance. And I think in commercial farming, we've gotten away from that. You come from a very long line of winemakers. So can you just tell us about your history? I come from um, the Fetzer family. Um, my, my father, Barney Fetzer, and my mother, Kathleen Fetzer, started Fetzer Vineyards in 1968 in Mendocino County. And he started Fetzer more as a um, hobby. He was a hobby winemaker and the, the property we lived on had, had um, some 90 year old vineyards and we started working with them and, and replanting them and um, it, the whole thing just kind of evolved into Fetzer. And your brother's winery is just over the, on the other side of the hill, correct? Yeah, contiguous with the property is my brother John who has Saracena um, and he has wine caves in the, in the hillside. So it's a great place to go over and taste wines. My sister Patty has a, um, a, a vineyard called Patiana, um, does a fabulous um, Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, my brother Jim is just over the mountain on Clear Lake and he has um, Ciego Vine Garden. So tell me what it was like to actually grow up in a wine making family. <laughs> well, I was the youngest of the group, and so um, I, I spent a lot of time cleaning barrels and tanks uh, growing up. The romance is about skin deep. Yeah. <laughs> is there a little secret that you could tell us about making wine? Well, my, my father, he had a great saying. He said, you can make good wine from, from good grapes, and you can make bad wine from good grapes, but you can't make good wine from bad grapes. So the, the moral of the story is, I, I think, the, the wines are actually made in the vineyard. You're also an architect, correct? I am. I, I, um, I don't have the credentials, but I have more of an art background. Okay, so tell it, us about that. Well, growing up with Fetzer, um, we were doing a lot of building in the winery. So I took over all the design and building of Fetzer Vineyards. And when I took over this property in 97, I expanded my creativity with uh, Design in Jericho. It's gorgeous. So you've got a villa on the property. Yep. Originally built in 1898 by um, a judge from San Francisco, Sturdivant. Uh -huh. And I remodeled it um, exactly 100 years later and kind of expanded on the architecture. When, when I took it over, it had more of a colonial influence. And so I expanded that into more of a California approach. So Daniel, tell us about a normal experience here with the visitors coming to the property. Well, a lot, a lot of the guests will check in to the house and um, obviously there's a beautiful pool here. On a day like this, they would jump in. Um, inside the villa, there's, there's six bedrooms. The lower floor of the villa is pretty much for entertaining and 
There's a billiards room and a, a big wine cellar under the house. The kitchen has a um, wood-burning Tuscan oven, so a lot of the guests will, um, you know, maybe take a walk around the, the estate, pet the goats and the sheep, and come back and maybe put together a, a pizza for the pizza oven. Okay, so I want to know, what's your favorite wine that you make here? I would have to say probably the Pinot Noir. You know, I, I love them all just like you would um, any of your, like your children almost. But the, I, I think we do a great job with our Pinot Noir. What is your favorite thing to prepare with this? The nice thing about Pinot, the, the, the lighter style of the Pinot, is you can, you can have it with, a, with fish. You can spend the day in Fort Bragg and bring, bring home a nice salmon from, from the Pacific coast. You could, um, you could pair it with chicken or lamb or, or even beef. So the, the Pinot Noir has a lot of flexibility. I'm digging the go to Fort Bragg, get a piece of salmon, come back here, open a bottle of Pinot. That sounds great. Let's do it. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Teresa.